event organization and working with speakers and word camps and I always tell them to look for presentations that are stories that people tell them what they've done, what's happened. So I said, all right, I'll do that. I'll make a presentation. I'll tell a story. Um, so we're going to try that. A um, couple of disclaimers. Um, I'll talk about myself. I normally don't do this. I'm going to tell a story. Don't always do that. So we're going to work through this together, right? Um, so I'll put the slides up afterwards. So one thing I wanted to check, this is the higher ed track, and I'm talking mostly about nonprofits. Um, just for a show of hands, how many people here are higher ed specific related that are in the room? Okay. Nonprofit? Okay, great. All right. So we will start talking about me. So my journey with nonprofits started back in 1983 working for a university hospital. Finance, accounting, boring stuff. But what's interesting is once you get in working with a nonprofit, you understand their ways, you understand what they do, and pretty much you become ingrained in that world, or at least I did. I then worked through that in many jobs, and in 2004, I did two things. I started, started a nonprofit, and boy, that's a different experience. And I also changed my business where I started consulting to nonprofits. The twist on this is that there's no WordPress related function at this point because back then all of the systems that I were using was proprietary. It was accounting systems, finance, project management, you know, Microsoft certified this and Microsoft that. So it was a very different experience from what the open source world is. So the next step for me was 2006. I discovered WordPress. Or maybe it was discovered for me. Um, so, I'll, so how did I get involved in WordPress and open so source software? Uh, basically my wife. Um, she started her own websites and she needed help and I did computer systems and the like. So I got pulled in that way. And it was really interesting and I got bitten by the WordPress bug and we started developing WordPress sites, started working on them. And in 2012, we had, I had gotten to the point where now we were creating WordPress sites for nonprofits. And I was kind of back to where I started and working with the people in the organizations that I was comfortable with and that I liked working with. So, with working with nonprofits, you know, creating a website, you know, WordPress, you know, when I started with it, and even in 2012, it was at that point transitioning to being thought of more as a CMS as opposed to a blogging platform. You know, we were actually pushing the envelope, people wanted the blog, they wanted the WordPress site, but they wanted a lot of functionality. So the first thing we always heard from these organizations is, we want contributions. Okay, we need the money. How else are we gonna run? We need memberships. That's first and foremost, I need to have that. We're gonna run events, because the events are the fundraisers. Um, we are going to need mailings. They're going to send bulk mail, you know, to all their constituents or to their uh, contacts. Transactional, the receipt for that event, a reminder that that event is going to happen. Petitions, advocacy. We had started working with nonprofits that were doing a lot of, I'll say lobbying, because I can't think of a better word, but they were really on a social cause, trying to get people to write to their congressmen to support funding of the arts. That's the first one that comes to mind. So we needed that and they needed reports. They needed reports on all of this because how else could you see what your effect was if I didn't have a report? And lastly, they wanted it all integrated. They wanted to look up a contact record for one of their you know, members 
and see everything they had done, all the activities that that contact had done. At the time, it hadn't really dawned on us, um, and since I'm bad about talking about myself, us and the we that I'm referring to is Tadpole Collective, that's the WordPress agency that um, I'm a part of, and so that's the we, because we, we're the ones that develop these sites. We really were starting to realize that what we were asking for was not just a bunch of plugins, but a CRM. And we went to build this with WordPress, because that's what we knew and loved. And we started out with plugins. We started out with event plugins, membership plugins, and it was a real interesting thing when we put together a site and had, I think the first site we thought we had right, had about 72 different plugins to give the organization what they wanted. <coughs> but yet, it didn't. Okay? It, it just didn't have the functionality, it didn't have the cohesiveness. So we had a bit of a problem. One of our collective members was working with a project called Civi CRM. And Civi CRM is an add-on to WordPress, I won't call it a plugin, but it was originally developed for Drupal as a module in 2005. Joomla support was added next, and in 2012 they released a WordPress um, bridge, if you will. So now there was a WordPress plugin. I mean, I won't call it a plugin because the it's really bigger than WordPress in many ways. So we decided to look into this. So, you know, why should we use Civi CRM? Should we now throw out the 72 plugins and try to work with this one system? So, why did we want to work with Civi CRM? Well, a number of reasons, which I've you know, listed up there. Yes, my PowerPoint's old. I don't have a fancy one. That's not me. But it's really you know, what do we, what do the clients, what are our nonprofits want? They want to own and control their own data. They want to make sure that they have it, that it's not some proprietary um, data store that they're paying for or that they have to, what's the word I'm looking for? I have to worry about getting the data out later. Open source. Okay, honestly, our clients weren't as concerned about that as we were, but we wanted an open source GPL solution because that's just where we think the biggest strength is, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. We wanted a strong community. By 2012, all of us had been members of the WordPress community and understood the power of the community in building a strong profit, uh, profit project, okay, and maybe profit, and we wanted something that shared values with WordPress. And as we delved into City CRM, we thought we pretty much had it. So, Civi CRM is, and that's civicrm.org, and when I post the slides, I'll make sure I put the links in the slides, I don't have them here yet. Civi CRM is an open source project, GPL, that has a really clear vision. And just like WordPress democratizes publishing, Civi CRM is basically a CRM that will allow organizations to engage their contacts and own their own data and their code and modify and extend. And that's really what drew us in. And it was like, so I need a CRM. And you know, what is a CRM at heart? You know, for us, you know, contact, you know, constituent relationship management system. Okay. All that's going to do is it's going to stitch the parts together that I mentioned before. It's going to allow an organization to take contributions, memberships, events, grants. I'll go on in a couple of slides. But it's a single database, a single place for them to store this and then be able to use that going forward. City does this in a modular-based method. And what we liked about that was that we did not have to turn on all the modules. It has contributions. It has pledges, it has memberships, events, mass communications, both SMS messaging and email, and campaigns so that we can tie these together. 
it further has added case management so that you can actually, you know, there are nonprofits managing, you know, like so, social uh, services managing cases all through city CRM. Volunteer management has been added where we can now assign and track volunteers, not only for events, but for fundraisers. There's a grant module. You know, if you are a grant recipient or if you are a grant giver, you can actually track your grants. Full accounting functionality. We can actually tag every transaction in the system with accounting codes so it can be exported and pulled into your accounting system. And reporting. The reporting module at the heart is one of the strongest things that, that is there. So this seemed to fit our need, so we said, okay, let's really dig into this. We also looked at, and I wanted to put up here, that looks okay up there, the usage by sector. And I got this information right from the city CRM core team. This goes back to April. And the largest sector still is education. Now, that's not education as in higher ed universities using this, although some do. It's more education nonprofits as a classification of the nonprofit. If you have an educational mission, you fall into this bucket. And who was using the software fit in with what we wanted to do. So this was perfect, right? We had everything we asked for. No. Okay? Exactly. So when we're back in, I guess we, it, in late 2012, early 2013, you know, we were on the initial WordPress integration. And that initial WordPress integration was sponsored by a university in Scotland who needed and did research and decided they needed city CRM, but they didn't want or need Drupal or Joomla. So they paid to have the city CRM made compatible with WordPress. Very interesting. Um, they launched, and they're not using it anymore because the person in charge moved, but they helped fund this. So when, it looked, when we got into it, there were a lot of features that were not fully developed for WordPress because there had been six to seven years worth of development working with Drupal, um, and we couldn't compete on that. We couldn't have all the fiction functionality we wanted. So really it was, well, how do we fix this? What do we do? What do we as a group do? Do we abandon this or do we move on? Well, we were WordPress people. We had met doing meetups in New York and WordCamps in New York, so we knew what the answer was going to be. We never abandoned anything. We contribute. <laughs> exactly. So basically the answer here is, well, what can we do to fix this? How can we get it done? We're, we're going to contribute. So as we started working on it, we came to the realization that there were very few WordPress people working on city CRM. When we went to their conferences and when we went to their, they don't have contributor days, they have code sprints. When we went there, we were it. Okay? There were other people because there were other installs. And I didn't bring the slide because I couldn't get, get it to work properly, but back in 2012, WordPress had about 2% of all installs of City CRM. Okay? And Drupal was somewhere in the 85 to 90% range. So, you know, of course, there were so many, so many fewer of us. But we needed the improvements. So, what we decided was we'll start creating issues, we'll start asking for the functionality, and wherever possible, starting to build it itself. So now it's a question of, you know, what can we get done? We're a small agency in the New York City area. There's four of us working with nonprofits with relatively small budgets, so our pockets are not so deep. How are we going to get this done? And I'm no you know, expert coder. Okay, my background is in accounting and finance, and I've inherited this and learned as I've done. So we'll create issues. Community is a great thing. We're going to get in there, and they're going to help us. We're all going to pitch in and work together. 
So the first issue that I had was on a payment processor, you know, we want to take a contribution. So we want people to pay. There was an odd issue where um, if there were any zeros in the contribution after the decimal point, it was being stripped out. So if somehow you calculated that it was $100.09, it's $100. Okay? If it was $100.57, it was $100.57. Weird bug. There was an issue for it. We commented. So I basically start off by saying, hey, you know, let me go through my settings. Let's try to fix this. Oh, by the way, my CMS is WordPress, and this is happening. Maybe there's a bigger problem. Maybe they were never there at all. And I got my first response back in this community. And I've whited out the person because this has changed years later. Okay. There's your problem, WordPress. So at this point, we really knew that we were pretty much alone, and we had to do two things. We had to change the code to make it better, and we had to change minds. And I, I see someone nodding right there, and the, the latter is so much more difficult. So what, you know, how did I react to this? What, what was I going to do? Well, anyone who knows me knows my initial reaction was probably loud, not repeatable, and quite animated. Um, and I'm sure it was. Um, especially since I still talk about this to this day. But we talked about it, and our solution was, I installed Drupal and Joomla. I learned Civi CRM on all three CMSs, and I started testing on all three. One of the things that attracted me to Civi was it worked on three different CMSs. It was a true open source solution, and it would be accessible to many, many people. You didn't have to install WordPress if you had Drupal. You could use it. You could use it with Joomla. So the opportunity here of having a project, an open source project that spanned, well, to me, the three major CMSs open source, was real attractive. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to get involved. And we had a result. And what ended up happening was we were able to bring more WordPress people into the project. The leads, the people running City CRM, saw the power of this. Now let's not, you know, dilute, let's not think we did everything. They took a look at WordPress and in 2013, what was it, only 22% of the web at that point? It was still such a large install base that they were like, yeah, we need to get this going, so we had support. The community as a whole became more open and started doing less single CMS development and more what we call CMS agnostic, so that all the code works with all three CMSs. And we've now seen an increased use of Civi CRM with WordPress. I ran the stats, or I asked them to run me the stats Thursday, yesterday. Um, WordPress is now up to 21% of the installs for Civi CRM. Drupal is still the king of the hill, and Joomla is dropped, which all makes sense, and WordPress is growing every month. So this is great. We're making progress. We're still doing the code. So, as I put on the bullet point, April 2015 rolls around. By now, our firm has established itself as a contributor to City CRM. We're known, and they have an annual conference each year, and that year it was in Denver, and a big code sprint. And we go there, and their code sprints are different than our contributor days. They take all the contributors, and we went to Rocky Mountain National Park put us in three cabins. We were going to live there for a week, cook for ourselves, do everything, and contribute code. It's like a, a, a week in the woods. Uh, kind of neat. With computers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wi-Fi, everything. Okay? So the lead developer comes up to myself and two other people, a Joomla person and a Drupal, and says, okay, here's your task for the week. You're going to rewrite the installer. Excuse me? 
Who? Me? Okay. Well, because there was a real problem, especially with the WordPress install. So, and I'm trying not to dive into a demo because then I'll keep you forever. In the WordPress installer, you'd install the plugin, you click activate, and then you'd come to a settings page where you confirm everything was right, and then it would install what it needed to run this plugin. Except this is what it looked like when you did it. Tons of red. Okay? It was, we can't install the software. Your database credentials are wrong. You cannot write to this folder where we're going to put the user files. We have to write to the plugin file. So, from our perspective, meaning mine, um, it was doing everything wrong. And we, this was our goal, was to fix it. And we sat down and we got support, and now with the current version, it now goes like that. Because we've now been able to rebuild the installer, and a lot more, because this turned into a project where we um, actually, as I mentioned, this was built for a single use for the Scottish University. Um, a lot of things were hard-coded, and that's all gone now. We're now all using native WordPress functions. Now when you get this installer, as long as you're on a typical and good WordPress host, it's all green and you can continue. So that was a big win for us because now people can actually download the software, install it, and it will work. So that really showed us that this project was very serious about getting to work with all three CMSs and supporting ourselves. So, to me, that was pretty much, you know, validation of all the time spent, everything done. So, this is where I was thinking of a demo, but I'm not. So, one of the things that I mentioned was that one of the things that our nonprofit clients had always been asking for is what they call a contact dashboard, a place to see all activity for a particular contact, what they've done. And just to illustrate, let's see how good that is. I don't know how well you can see that, but we are able that when you record all your activities in Civi, it will give you a dashboard that either the user or the admin can see that says, what groups are you in? What contributions have you made? Have you made a pledge? If there are soft credits, meaning husband, wife, partners, you know, uh, organization making a matching donation on behalf of an employee, all those soft credits get uh, recorded as well. What events have we gone to? Okay, what memberships do you have? Yes, in my test system is only one because I gave myself a lifetime membership. Okay, relationships. Because what Civi does is it allows us to record relationships, whether that is parent child employee, employer, um, partner, so business partner or life partner. Uh, personal campaign pages. I've created a personal campaign page because that functionality is baked in here. And grants, because we use this particular system for testing the grant functionality. So this actually melds everything together and, you know, I can, afterwards we can talk down at the happiness bar, I think is what's been instructed. If you have specific questions about this, but this now, at this point, has gotten to a very usable solution. It's been that way probably since about 2015, but we've taken it to the next step. So one of the other things that we wanted to just briefly talk about is alternative CRMs, because there's a lot out there. And the ones we come in competition with, and I'm going to pop up a list, these are the ones that we hear about. By no means is this a comprehensive list, the best list, the worst list, or anything. But Nation Builder is one we see all the time. And it's a CRM and a CMS. Salsa is more of a CRM and big in the political sector. A lot of the people we deal with down in DC use that. Blackboard for nonprofits, including their e tapestry acquisition. We hear that all the time. Sugar CRM and Salesforce for nonprofits. All of the time. We know this because when we get people moving to City CRM, 
These are the systems we have to take them from. And the reason that we believe in Civi CRM okay, is that you're never trapped. Because a lot of the clients that come to us feel trapped by the pay-as-you-grow fees with Nation Builder. That's right, we're going to reward you. The, the more successful you are, the bigger we're going to charge you to use our system. Salsa, same thing, the more you use. There was a price increase a couple of years ago that was great for us because I think it was a, they at least doubled their prices right now. Uh, you could be spending upwards of 3500 a month to use Salsa. And for small and medium-sized nonprofits, it's not going to happen. And then the cost to get your data out of these systems is exorbitant. Salesforce for nonprofits, I don't have a screenshot because their pricing is really hidden because they say Salesforce for nonprofits is free until you hit limits. Yes, I, you, you hit that. Okay. Yeah. And now it starts costing you. And we even, on that, we even have a partner organization we work with out of Brooklyn, New York. They have scripts to pull all the data out of Salesforce and get it into, well, technically any CRM, but you know, we obviously are looking at the city. So that is why we believe in the city CRM. So from this journey, you know, what lessons have we learned? And what, I guess, message, or what do I think is the right thing for nonprofits to do? And I, our opinion, or my opinion, since I'm the only one standing here, is that we want to have everyone on open source software. We get to see the code. We get to review the code. You can modify the code. WordPress has a plug-in system, so if you have something that you need to do with WordPress, you can build a plug-in to do that. Civi Serum has an extension system. It's just a plugin. It's just their word. So now we're going to extend Civi's functionality. So in both cases, I can change the actions of either system without modifying the core code. And if you go to any developer talks, they'll tell you that's a bad thing. And we'll, we're able to do it. We're also crowdsourcing. So one of the Plugin, WordPress plugins we use quite often with Civi CRM and nonprofits is BuddyPress. We integrate a few of the modules of BuddyPress here. We have a BuddyPress group sync plugin that synchronizes BuddyPress groups with Civi CRM groups, which we use for both, you know, security, access control lists, mailings, etc. And that plugin was built by multiple organizations funding it. The CUNY Academic Commons, we participated. Um, the, our, our client, NWU, National Writers Union, they actually participated. So by crowdfunding this, now this functionality is not just done for one organization, it's out there for everyone. And that's what we see as one of the greatest strengths of using a system like this. Because if you are on a proprietary system, you use it their way. And you know, if you get it modified for you, and I'm thinking more of the Blackboard Razor's Edge world, it's just for you. So for us, that's why we ended up using City CRM. The journey of how we got here was my story that I may or may not have told well, but I tried. Um, and the future is pretty bright because we are starting to really get feature parity with Drupal, and I hope that we're actually going to be listing this in the plugin directory soon. Okay, there's a few hurdles there. Um, the plugin team, I think, has one last question of is this really a plugin because this system is enormous? Um, but the plugin team for WordPress is very reasonable, so I think we'll be able to work through that. Um, so that's what we've learned through this journey, and I thank you very much for listening. And do we have any questions? Happy to run Mike if we get some. Okay. Taking this one. Okay. Oh. Or they could walk. Right here. Uh, so that last part, uh, are you saying that if we wanted to use this on a project right now, it's not available or is it on no, GitHub? No. It, it's, um, <coughs> it's totally on GitHub. That's where we do all our development. 
on cityCRM.org, there's a download link, and that's where you're going to download the code from. Um, it's just not in the WordPress uh, plugin. Okay. Question back here first. Oh. Oh, okay. Oftentimes, nonprofits lack in house technical expertise, and it's really difficult for them to do things like maintain and upgrade systems like Civi CRM. Mm -hmm. So, the promise of owning all of your own data and your own system actually turns into a nightmare when you don't have technical staff to actually maintain and upgrade a system like Civi. So, I'm curious, what solutions do you have for that type of challenge? So part of what we're doing there is the changes that we have now made in what's called version 4.7 of City CRM basically allows for it to be updated basically like any other WordPress plugin. So in the old days, you would have to go through a very manual update process. Now we can just update the plugin. For our clients, because we keep them on a maintenance plan, an I update all of our clients through a single script and it takes me a few minutes and you know, there's very low overhead. But yeah, at a, at a nonprofit, there's going to have to be somebody that knows how to update a plugin. So at, at this stage, if you, once the system is installed and configured, if you can maintain a WordPress website and keep it and the plugins up to date, this can be kept up to date. And I won't. I don't want to sugarcoat it because you are now managing your own CRM. You have to do your backups. You have to do your data. But if you if you don't have an in-house IT and you work with a good, reputable WordPress slash city CRM agency or consultant, they can get you set up so that you can then do that. Any other questions? First of all, bravo for all the work you've done in this. This has been needed for a really long time. Um, what can you say about security oh. uh, you know, of the data? So the two sides of that. So the security, I'll talk first because of what I think of first is the code security. So being an open source project on GitHub with many eyes reviewing it, it has very similar attributes that WordPress has. So stay up to date. There is a security team on Civi CRM, just like there is for WordPress, that addresses any reported security vulnerabilities and patches them. So that, if we stay up to date, that's, I mean, there's not as many people working on it, but it's similar. On the data security, it depends on what you're storing in Civi. To date, I have not stored any data that would come under uh, PCI compliance, HIPAA compliance, or any of the, you know, third rails. Um, credit card data with the payment processors that are used is not stored in the database, in the code, anywhere. Um, there is personal information, so you're going to have names and addresses and phone numbers. The scrutiny that that gets under is of course um, less than what I would then any PCI or HIPAA, but it is something to watch for. In that sense, we do everything on, um, you know, we, every, every SIVI implementation we do is SSL. We make sure that the servers and that the, the hosting plans they're on provide adequate backups and are as secure as possible, as possible, and we curate the plugins so that we, we are reducing the surface area. It's a concern, um, absolutely. Um, but it's in today's world, it's it's not that different than another hosted solution because you have to worry about those things there. You are, as someone pointed out, you are now taking on that burden yourself or sharing that with your consultant. Does that ramble answer you at all? Absolutely. Okay. One more question. One more? Great. We have one more. Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> um, not knowing anything about the Civi CRM ecosystem, um, you said it's open source and GPL. Mm -hmm. How do they make money? Is it like a oh. premium model? I mean, <laughs> where does that come into play? It's, 
and again, that's a great question. So, the Civi CRM is GPL. It is free. There is no cost to download. So they have a core, unlike WordPress, where everyone is donated to the project and no one really owns that code base. There's a team of five people that belong to the Civi CRM organization that draws salary. So how do they get paid? There, you can member. Users of Civi are encouraged to become a member organization of Civi CRM and make a donation. They take donations for people just like a plugin developer might take donations. And they've been the recipients of grants from varying organizations. Um, the largest or the most well-known organization, and I didn't put that slide in, maybe I'll add it before I post, uh, the New York State Senate um, is the largest well-known Civi CRM user. Um, so if we're in Massachusetts, but if we were in New York, um, anyone here, their data was sitting in a Civi CRM database. Um, so they were a major funder at that point when they did the project. And they do consulting work so that if I have a client asking for a big feature that's beyond my skills, I can actually subcontract that out to the core team. They'll build it and, of course, get paid for. So that's how they're funding. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I know we're out of time. And enjoy the work.